Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to our homestead. There is one thing that holds a lot of people back, and it also holds some homesteaders back. And we really need to talk about that today. Let's go. So I'm doing a lot of our bed prep here in the greenhouse, and I really should have had it done already because planting season is upon us here in Texas. But before I do that and continue to put together our last raised bed here, this is the skinny one for the tomatoes in the center, I wanna talk about fear. So of course there's a healthy fear, and that keeps people out of danger and hurting themselves, right? I have a healthy fear of electricity when I'm working on the solar system. And being cautious, of things is a good thing. And being critical of them, some things is also a good thing. As an architect in school, we do what's called a critique. But when we are extremely fearful of everything out there, then that holds us back from doing a lot of things, especially out here on our homestead. Now, why did I want to talk about this subject today? Well, it has to do with a video that I released a couple of weeks ago about the uh, chicken feed at Tractor Supply. Now, of course, there's a lot of different personalities out there, and some people are more fearful than others. And so with regards to the other video, there was so much fear in the comments. I didn't hear a lot of solution or working through things. So I have a lot of friends who are Marines, and I always use their same adage, right? Their same saying, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And I would actually add one for me, it's observe, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that will help you alleviate fear, especially when you're working on something out on your homestead. So when it comes to the chickens or any livestock that you have, you want to observe. Is there something wrong? Okay, yes, they're not laying eggs, that's wrong. What is the cause of it? Okay, I'm feeding tractor supply feed to them. Change it instantly. Maybe it's the feed, could be, I haven't had it proved to me yet. Maybe it's not, maybe it's something else. Go through the 11, 12, 13 different things that could stop a chicken from laying first before you blame feed. And I'm not talking down to anybody. I want you to observe your space. I want you to observe the things that are going on around you, improvise, adapt to it, and overcome it. So I'll tell you some statistics from the comments on that video. And this does have to do with fear, right? So I had over 1,500 comments on that video. That is unprecedented for me on my size of channel in just a few short weeks. The majority of those comments mentioned that they either did feed tractor supply uh, food to their chickens and it had no effect. They were still laying eggs. There was a minority of people who fed tractor supply feed to their chickens and they stopped laying eggs. So yes, that raises the question. Let's look at it analytically, right? Some people are having no eggs, tractor supply feed, and the others are a majority. Could there be something wrong with the feed? Yes, but who's to blame? Who knows? There's a lot of different factors going into making that feed. I had a really great commenter. She said, well, potentially, Somebody had some old food, Purina, laying around and it got moldy and old and nasty and they bagged it up anyway and sold it private label, producers pride or do more to Tractor Supply. Would Tractor Supply know about that? Maybe, maybe not. Now, when I talk about things like this, I always use words that are not definitive. I use words like maybe, potentially, probably, or probably not, potentially not, or maybe not, right? because I don't have all the information and neither do most people out there. I heard there's one gentleman by the name of Mike Adams who's doing testing on the feed. What has he found so far? I haven't really seen much. And whenever I asked commenters who insisted that there was a bad chemical in the feed to produce the testing for it or the news articles or whatever it was, they couldn't. I really feel sorry for people who were so fearful that they had been on my channel for five, six years, who had commented about my cute kids out here working in the garden, and they instantly disagreed with me, unsubscribed, and called me names. That is the kind of mentality that will get you in a world of hurt. It won't move you forward. And that's what we're talking about, having a strong mind to be able to move forward. Now, are there conspiracies out there in this world? Yes, people conspire together all the time. 
I absolutely believe that. It is most often people in power who conspire together to hurt the little guy. I said that in the last video. But people don't listen to the entire video before they make judgments out of fear in their own heart. They click onto one thing that I've said and automatically form an opinion without listening to the rest of the video. Then form your opinion about whether you think I'm a nut or not. And for those very few people who unsubscribe from the channel, I wish you the best. I really do. It was only 67 of you. And I appreciate a couple people engaging me in the comments, but even in a written conversation, somebody will misconstrue every word that comes out of your mouth. And there is nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about talking with that person. You will just never meet eye to eye and anything you say will be completely flipped on its head when that's not the intent of the words that came out of my mouth. In that video, I was trying to help people. I wanted to help people in every video that I make. I want to help you think through problems, give you solutions, and maybe something I'm doing here will help you out. And it comes down to that personality thing. If someone wants to completely misunderstand what I've said, even though I try to explain it to them in replying to a comment, maybe 15 times, that's how long some of the conversations were, uh, there's really nothing I can do. We will never, ever see eye to eye. And that's okay, but that's becoming more of a thing in our country that's actually bringing us down. All right, I've been called a liberal, I've been called a crazy conservative. I am neither. Nobody knows my political leanings. And you can rest assured that I'm not a communist in any sense of the term, even though I've been accused of that. I've even had discussions with communists in the comment section who've tried to cover themselves up and <laughs> not let it out that they are, but they are. Nobody believes in freedom or liberty anymore in this country is a very small minority. And we were told by our founders that if we formed parties and started to be partisan and we stopped believing in freedom and liberty, then we would lose this country. And in my opinion, I think we have. But again, I'm not fearful of that. Why? Because I know what Bible prophecy says. And that's what I want to bring it back around to is fear in the Bible is actually a sin, believe it or not. And we are to have a reverential fear of God that is looking at his awesomeness and understanding how um, big and gracious and loving he is. That is an amazing thing to look at. And it's fearful to look at something like that. But we are not to fear our fellow man. We can go to the story of Stephen when he was stoned and we can look and he was still, he was begging the Lord to not blame them for what they were doing. He was not fearful to go in to talk to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and preach Jesus. And Jesus was not fearful. When the soldiers and Judas and the Pharisees came to take him away, he knew where he was going. Peter was fearful. He lashed out. He chopped off the soldier's ear. Jesus told him to put the sword away and quietly went with them. He was not fearful. And I know from the Bible that the United States is in prophecy. Read Revelation 13, 11, but cross-reference that with Daniel. Daniel and Revelation go hand in hand with one another. So friends, that's why I do not do many videos at all, if any, on current events or current things. Now I did on the tractor supply thing because I don't shop there anymore. I was also accused of shopping there still <laughs> or being a representative of the company. I don't shop there because of the evidence that was presented to me very well by Doug on Doug and Stacy's homestead. There was actual evidence and admission of fault and guilt in that case. So I have not shopped there at all since that entire incident. And here's my final point. I don't want you to get distracted. Too many people are distracted out of fear. The government's doing this, the government's doing that. Yes, they will. Governments are inherently evil. And there are probably only like two good guys in the United States uh, Congress right now. That's it. I don't trust the rest of them as far as I can throw them. And earthly governments will never be the solution. 
The Jews wanted a king, so God gave it to them. And what happened to the nation of Israel? It totally imploded. Instead of them trusting God and letting him be their king. So I know this isn't you, but if you hear of somebody or you know of somebody who is very fearful about the government doing this, the government doing that, they're probably doing it. Maybe, maybe not, but you cannot dwell on that, on that fear. So there are bad things happening. They will continue to get worse the closer the time is to when Jesus comes. Because the Bible tells us it'll be worse than in the days of Noah when he flooded the entire earth and only eight people were saved. So keep that healthy fear I talked about at the beginning, but not that very unhealthy fear that holds so many back. Have a beautiful blessed day. I'm going to get back to my garden beds and we will see you on the next video.